What is this garbage you're watching? I want to watch the news. Are you making are you making headway at least? This is the news. The Stasi, short for the Ministerium für Staatssicherheit, or the Ministry for State Security, this organization was the dreaded, highly capable, and ever-present secret police force that peeked into the private lives of East German citizens during the Cold War. For roughly 40 years, the Stasi, operating overtly, covertly, and abroad, helped foster an atmosphere of fear, distrust, and suspicion amongst the civilian population and are generally regarded as one of the most effective espionage and repression-based groups of all time. In this video, we will take a look at the formation and history of the Stasi, as well as some accounts of their activities, some famous members that acted as informants, and how their legacy affected East-West relations post-reunification. Four months after the establishment of East Germany, and the taking of power by the Communist Socialist Unity Party of Germany, the Stasi was founded on the 8th of February 1950, with Wilhelm Zeisser as the first minister. The first ten years of the organization saw many changes. In 1951, the Hauptverwaltungsaufklärung, or the main directorate for reconnaissance, and HVA for short, had its predecessor established with Soviet help. Their primary goal was the intelligence gathering on foreign countries, and they officially became a thing in 1955. After the political fallout from the East German uprising of 1953, Zeisser was removed by First Secretary Walter Ulbricht and replaced by Ernst Wollweber. The Soviet Politburo also downgraded the Stasi to fall in under the Ministry of the Interior. They retained this status until November of 55, when they were restored to their former ministry role. Wollweber resigned in 1957 after frequent clashes with Ulbricht and General Secretary Erich Honecker. In stepped Erich Milka, Sovietophile and a murderer of two policemen in 1931. He would remain the secret police chief until the end of the Cold War. Over time, the Stasi became a well-organized and centralized machine. A quick summary of their organizational flowchart can best be described as having a varying number of divisions at the main headquarters, each headed by a high-ranking officer. Each division was further subdivided into 15 districts, and all districts were made up of 227 local precincts. All lines ran back to the main headquarters. Also, special location detachments were created for places of high importance, like industrial areas and government buildings. Their level of seepage into the private lives of everybody was extremely disturbing. The Stasi Archive website notes that, quote, They penetrated into citizens' private lives observing them, bugging their phones, spying on them, arresting and interrogating them. An article on HistoryCollection.co notes the following, quote, The Stasi would break into a suspect's house while they were out and place tiny microphones everywhere to eke out every word that was uttered in the house. Every telephone call would be monitored, too. Also, truly bizarre practices such as voyeuristic pinhole cameras in hotel rooms and taking skin and sweat samples from interrogation rooms were done. Their sinister practices reached a peak with Zersetzung, which means roughly translated decomposition. Wanting to find a way to destroy dissent movements with little physical tactics, they resorted to things like, quote, regularly spreading rumors that certain people within opposition groups were actually in their employment. Also, they employed brutal psychological tactics like moving furniture around, resetting alarms, and sending unannounced packages to homes and apartments. This psychological manipulation, also known as gaslighting, can be defined as manipulation by psychological means to make one question their own sanity. And indeed it worked, with post-reunification reports suggesting that around 10,000 were targeted in this way, with half permanently damaged. Also, inoffizielle Mitarbeiter, or unofficial collaborators, were used. These were normal civilians that were thrown a bone for spying on neighbors and close friends. They were generally part of groups or organizations that regular Stasi operatives had a hard time infiltrating. Although numbers vary on just how many there were, hundreds of thousands over the course of the DDR's history were employed. As previously mentioned, the scope of their operations went outside East Germany with the HVA. 
planning the means to operate clandestinely and acquire good intel on foreign leaders and countries, the Stasi were on par with the KGB in their abilities. It's estimated that roughly 4,000 were employed, with a similar number within their sphere of influence. Some high-profile Stasi agents include successful businesswoman and hotel manager Uta Felgner, deputy head of the Soviet section of the West German intelligence agency Gabriele Gast, and personal secretary to Chancellor Willy Brandt of West Germany, Günther Guillaume. In regards to their international operations, the HVA was very prolific and aided secret police organizations such as those in Cuba, Mozambique, and Ethiopia. They channeled money to neo-Nazi groups in West Germany to try and destabilize their regime. They operated brothels to try and procure information out of high-ranking generals and business people. And in the most unreal example, they executed Operation Denver. This was a deliberate misinformation smear campaign to convince people that the U.S. actually created HIV-AIDS as a biological weapon. Although completely untrue, this conspiracy theory still floats around today, and millions still believe it to be true. Ultimately, the collapse of the Soviet Union saw the collapse of East Germany and the Stasi. They tried to burn sensitive files at the headquarters in Berlin shortly after the wall fell, but on January 15, 1990, a large mob of protesters overpowered the police guarding the building and stormed it to prevent files from being lost. After reunification, a new organization abbreviated the BSTU was tasked with making a decision on how to proceed with the enormous collection. They ultimately ruled that people could request to see their own files. According to The Guardian, roughly 2.75 million people between 1991 and 2011 requested access to their files. They could read and see who ratted on them and gave information. This decision would ruin marriages, friendships, and result in many people being publicly ostracized and banned from the workforce. Also, incriminating evidence could be used against ex-Stasi to try and convict them for heinous crimes. Many Stasi hunters formed to do this.